Hello everybody. Um, I'm here to present the next art project and the demonstration and the information that you need to get started. So in the past two projects and overall, we're talking about line, shape, color, space, and texture, the elements of design. We've been concentrating in the first two projects on line and then on shape almost exclusively. So now we're going to kind of combine line and shape together and a little bit about space. But space isn't the main element in the picture. Okay. Because line creates shape, we can say that shape is transformed into form by using value. It's the example of drawing a circle and then using value in order to transform it into a sphere or a ball. Value and form are principles of design. Value creates form and it's necessary when you want objects to look 3D or three-dimensional. really important. So in this lesson, we're just going to go a little bit into how to use the tools that we have to create form. Um, it's still a very, very, very simple assignment, a simple artwork. It's just a little more time consuming than what we've done in the first two projects. I want to introduce you to some of the tools that I want to talk about. And the first one is a graphite stick. Okay, graphite stick is exactly what it says. It's just a chunk of graphite. Graphite's the softest mineral. It's pretty interesting that this is what diamonds are also made from, which is the hardest on the Mohs scale. Graphite is also found in pencils. In this case, this is a mechanical pencil. And the graphite in this pencil is pretty hard. Sometimes, depending on the type of paper that you have, they're very difficult to erase. Seem to work pretty good today. So for this project, if you are using a mechanical pencil on your own or at home or in class, perfectly okay. Just stick with the same tool for the entire project. That being said, Probably the best way to go is just a regular yellow pencil. Okay, so I'm going to be showing you some techniques on how to use the pencil to create the form in a few minutes. But I do want to point out one of the things about these three tools is its erasability and its smudging quality. So there's a difference between blending and creating value with just one tool. Blending is when you take two materials and you blend them together to either create value or to create a new color, okay? In the case of the graphite stick, it seems that the erasability is not very good. Okay, so if you make a mistake or you want to change something, it's a little harder to erase, especially on this type of paper that we have here in the art room. Mechanical pencils, a little bit better. And then eventually we get down to my favorite, just the regular number two yellow pencil that you use every day. It's probably the best one to use. But like I said, mechanical pencils are okay. So, and I hope that it, it's, you can see it fairly well. I'm just gonna use a scrap piece of paper to do this. And just by creating a circle or a square or any shape on the paper, this is flat and two dimensional. 
if I use my pencil for shading, and that's just a matter of practicing, kind of coloring in a little bit around the edge with just some lines very lightly, and then taking either your finger or a favorite here at Ansonia High School for smudging, in case you don't wanna get dirty, you use a Q-tip. Take the Q-tip, ooh, that works really good. That's excellent. And you can smudge. The pencil to create a light and dark area. So the more pencil I have on it, the layers of pencil that I have, it's going to be a darker area. As I use the Q-tip to smudge it, it's going to get lighter and lighter and lighter. And what that does is it makes it, the image look like there's light hitting it, and then there's a shadow on the opposite side. I can make this even more realistic if I add a tabletop. or tabletop back here and create a shadow. Okay. In the case of the square, you would also need to draw the other sides in order to make it three-dimensional. But for the purposes of this project, we're just gonna stick with just shading it in. And with the square, I wanna show you a different technique that you can do with a pencil, and that's just by adding pressure to create value. So you can use the blending by smudging it all out. I'm sorry, it's not blending. The smudging it all out, just smushing it and making it get lighter and lighter and lighter. Or you can use pressure. This is a little harder because the square is kind of big. So I'm pressing down really hard. And then I'm going to ease up on the pressure and eventually it'll get as light. And I can take my pencil then and kind of clean it up around the edges, also using pressure. Okay, so by using pressure, I can create value. And we're just gonna stick with using pencil in this and no color because I really, for the purposes of going into art too, or for learning how to draw realistically, since most colleges and most art schools wanna see most of your drawings in black and white, it's a really good technique to learn how to do. Some of you may already know how to do it, and that's great, okay? And there are different ways to use different materials to create value, but we're just gonna stick with pencil for today and for art one in general. Later on when we do painting and we start blending colors to make value, that's kind of a whole different thing, but we will get to that eventually. As far as the project go, this is where we get into using the space. Okay, we have a whole big blank piece of paper. Okay, I'm using a small one so it fits inside the little video screen that I have. Okay, and we wanna make sure that our artwork is going to cover the whole space of the paper, the whole picture plane. So the design that you create, okay, has to go from edge to edge. It can't just be floating in the middle or to one side of the paper. Okay, so this flat surface is called the picture plane and you'll be using the entire 100% of the paper. Now here in the classroom, we're gonna have some choices, but for those of you at home, this size paper is fine. Um, this is basic standard stuff that you can get anywhere in a sketchbook. You know, this happens to be nine by 12, eight by 10 is five. You can do this on copy paper as well. Um, you might have a little more trouble with erasing because the paper, copy paper is so thin. So let me show you how to set up the project. Okay, I'm gonna show you several examples first and then pick one that will show up the best on the video. 
So the student's name is right here, but it'll fit better. There we go. If I hold it up real close. So as you may have gathered, we're just using circles, squares, triangles, rectangles, but the important thing to note is that it goes all the way to the edge, side to side, breaking it up in all different directions. Okay, if you don't have a compass at home, you can use something that's a circle, okay? And if you don't have a ruler at home, you can just use something that's a machine-made straight edge, okay? Like the edge of a book. Okay, so hopefully you have those tools at home to do that. And certainly you'll have them in class here. So that's one design. This is my example that I made a long time ago. I actually sat with the students the first time I did this project and made one of my own. You can see here that the values are a little bit darker on this example than on the first example. And if I didn't do a good job, I wouldn't be much of an art teacher. I'm just showing you the designs now. I'm not talking about the values. Okay, this one's a student work. Very, very dark, really cool looking. She, she did work very, very hard on this. And lastly, there's only three circles on this. This is also a student work. The values are done a little bit differently here. She actually used um, the Q-tip to kind of make like some stripes as she was creating the value. Okay, you can experiment a little bit. But what I do want to point out on all of these is that each new space created by the overlapping lines is done individually. Okay, um, I'm going to use the really dark example to show you so you can really see what's going on. Each new space, let me get over here, each new space created by the overlapping is done like its own little artwork with value. Okay, so everything's broken up like it's a piece of shattered glass. That's what we're going for. And it does take a little while to fill up the whole paper. Also, if you're doing a smaller one, obviously it's not gonna take as long, but you might wanna try doing two and see which one comes out better. I can almost guarantee you that the second one will come out better than the first because you'll have more practice. Okay. That one's really cool looking on the video. Now on my example, it's kind of a standard setup. I have a lot of lines going across the bottom here, okay? And then all the circles are kind of more on the top. But do I really have to hang it this way? It's not supposed to be anything realistic, so I could always turn it and see if I like it a different way. Or maybe I like it to go vertically after I'm done. My point is, is that when you're working on these, turn them to make it easier for you to reach across and get out of space, okay? Especially if you're using the pressure technique to do the value. I definitely suggest practicing on another piece of paper before you start doing the actual artwork. Okay, so just to review, we're creating a uh, design using shape and line that uses the entire piece of paper and then using a pencil and no color, we are using pressure or smudging with a Q-tip or our finger or some other tool in order to create values from dark to light in every single shape that we create 
from our overlapping. And what this will do is transform sections into form to give it a slight three-dimensional look to it. Now, it doesn't look real. It's not supposed to look real. So it doesn't look like anything super 3D. But it's the first steps that we can take in order to get the skills that we need to be able to draw realistically. Okay, that's it for today. I will um, add anything I need to during our live sessions, but that should get you started. And of course, you can review this video at any time.